Hi, I'm Gush, and this is Let's Gush, a positive series of episodes each aimed at praising a particular game for its good design aspects. So, let's gush on Metro Last Light. Atmosphere. It's something most developers try to utilise in their games. From the Tolkien-esque fantastical vibes of a western RPG like the Elder Scrolls series, to the dissonance between the bright utopian aesthetic of Columbia and the uncomfortable truth that lies just under the surface in a game like Bioshock Infinite. Any game trying to sell its world to you needs to have the right atmosphere to go with it. Something that surrounds the player and makes it much easier to escape into. An atmosphere is a tool used to create immersion and convey to the player what kind of world they are invested in through feelings instead of audio logs or text bubbles. This method applied correctly can be used to help flesh out a setting tremendously. So what if that setting is more than just a setting? What if the setting is the main character? What if the game in question is Metro Last Light? Metro Last Light was developed by 4A Games and published by Deep Silver and was the sequel to the cult hit Metro 2033. Both games are based on the Russian series of science fiction novels written by Dmitry Glukovsky. After a destructive nuclear war, the inhabitants of Russia are forced into the metro system to avoid the radiation fallout. Picking up after the events of the first game, you take on the role of Artyom, a ranger for an independent faction. Moscow's metro system is in the midst of a war between three factions, the Independent, the Communists and the Nazis, each of which you will cross paths with on your adventure. In the events of the first game, Artyom was responsible for eradicating an entire race of beings called the Dark Ones that inhabited the surface, but now there seems to be one left, and Artyom is sent to track it down and help terminate it. The story is unique and along the way there are many plot twists, story revelations and world building to add to its already thick atmosphere. The game is a very linear one, but it's clear that 4A know that and just go all out with it. Giving the player more of a set path was probably a wise decision and meant that they could focus on what was there and really pack it with interesting things. Almost everything in the game is aimed at expanding one thing and that one thing is the Metro. The Metro is a living, breathing thing with a heart and most importantly, a soul. Whether you take the time out to explore the settlements within the Metro or partake in some of the little side activities, it's all there to flesh out the world, not the characters, the Metro. And what a Metro it is. The place is dark, depressing and dirty. Around every corner is something that tells you this place is barely even holding itself together. Corruption is everywhere and the game displays this to you right from the start expertly. This is a game that likes to show you and not tell you. Graphically, I would go as far to say it's a technical masterpiece. 4A want you to feel as though you are trudging through murky water at knee height. They want you to feel as though you are running out of clean oxygen and panic as you try to find a tank. They want you to wipe away the blood and gunk from your eyes while it's obstructing you from getting that crucial headshot. Last Light even turns something as eye-rolling as running out of flashlight batteries into an actual physical action. They do this by having you pull out a kinetic pump and you have to press a button to charge it yourself. It's details like this that when added up greatly adds to the immersion, and this is all without mentioning the tense and unforgiving trips you make to the surface. It wants you to feel the dread of this environment, and then it wants you to fight it and that you will. The Metro is filled with things that want to kill you. Luckily, the gunplay is superb. Each weapon fills a certain type of player's needs without feeling too overpowered. Bigger weapons like the automatic shotgun are powerful but balanced as it greatly reduces mobility. Upgrading your weapon is something you have to be wise about, as every choice has a drawback. Metro Last Light rewards a player that knows their strengths and uses careful planning. As well as fighting all manner of radiated abominations, you will frequently have to deal with perhaps the worst monster of them all, man. The communist faction and Nazis are both things you will have to deal with, whether you take a stealthy or loud approach. The game does reward a quiet and methodical plan of attack, but there is also no problem with going all doom guy on them. You can probably guess how I played. The HUD is minimal. 
only appearing when needed. The rest is all told through the environment or Artyom's watch on his left wrist. Artyom's watch displays a timer telling the player how long until you run out of oxygen, whilst also displaying whether or not you have alerted an enemy. Taking away as much as possible from the HUD is a perfect design choice for this game. This means there is less of a barrier between you and the world on screen and nothing is there to break immersion. Every gun has at least part of its ammunition visible through the weapon itself which is how to tell if you're going to need to reload soon. This is careful design applied in the most crucial of circumstances. In your visits to the surface, which becomes more and more frequent as the game progresses, Last Light has you read the environment more than any other part of the game. When you first step out into the unknown after slumming it in the metro for a good few hours, it's almost like freedom. Only that idea is quickly put down as you realise the natural light is only an illusion because the surface is even deadlier than the metro in almost every way. Here the air is thin and you have a limited supply of oxygen filters for your gas mask. As you worry about what kind of beast you will have to contend with sooner or later, you also have to look out for filters in fear of choking to death. Graphically the surface is, ironically, a breath of fresh air and is seamlessly integrated into the already brilliant pacing of the adventure. In fact, it's done so well that you start to realise the surface is actually an extension of the metro and that the two worlds affect one another. Everything I've mentioned leads me to what I think is the reason Metro Last Light succeeds. The atmosphere, the tension, the story and the immersion all succeed because it's all trying to achieve the same thing. It's all building to the character of the world. In this game, Artyom isn't the main character. You aren't the main character. The Metro is. Like I said before, and even one character in the story also mentions. The Metro is a living, breathing world with a heart and most importantly, a soul. Ultimately, that's why Metro Last Light is brilliant. Thanks for listening to me just gush on Metro, um, it's a really fantastic game if you haven't played it. It took me quite a long time to get round to it, but I um, eventually did and it was absolutely phenomenal. Um, I'd like to hear what you guys think about it and also what you'd like me to cover in the future. Thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.